Hey folks, how's everybody doing? Let me just jump screen there. We'll just jump onto it. I want to open up by telling you a fact, okay? I want you to put yourself in a scenario, right? And I'm going to deprive you of a few things. One of them is sleep and one of them is food. I'm going to give you water because I'm kind in that way. You know where this is going, don't you? What's going to kill you first, the sleep or the lack of food? Obvious answer, isn't it? Sleep deprivation will kill human beings before lack of food, as long as we drink. So, why is it people will contact me and share with you, or maybe you're one of these people, I can't sleep. Hmm. Many, very few people tell me they can't eat. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that fact later on in the video. I want to share something with you, something that's annoyed me a little bit today. Something that is, uh, well, making out that most human beings are complete morons and they've been led down a path and misguided by certain marketing strategies when it comes to food. Or maybe we are. And I want to talk to you a term about genetic mindset. Yes, I know. I dropped a little bit of it into school today, but you are here because we're going to talk about zone two testing. Yes, I'm going to give you a trilogy of tests for those of you who haven't seen Star Wars, that's three, okay? Then again, those of you who have seen Fast and Furious, that's probably 33. And isn't Mission Impossible now up to 10? What is the most franchise bullshit out there in Hollywood at the moment? <laughs> okay, anyway, back to best behaviour. I do like the comment that I got, I got during the week. Have you been on some social media training, coach? Your videos seem a little bit more professional and you're coming across better. And my brain is just exploding with being, desiring to go on a course like that, to be in a room full of aspiring teenagers trying to be YouTubers with a 53-year-old fucker in the corner swearing his head off. This is pish. Just do this. Anyway, come on. We want to talk about the trilogy. Now, this is a, a video with a difference because... You and I are going to talk about me. We're going to talk about this 53-year-old guy, somebody who's been involved in sport all his days at one level or another, okay? And we're going to use me as an example. Now, out of the three tests that I'm going to share with you, I've talked a little bit about them before and I put a little dropped upload video during the week. Lots of people ask questions. I don't understand, coach. So I'm going to go through it very, very carefully. Now, I'm also going to introduce why am I doing this type of testing and training? And I'll give you a little snippet of one goal that I have for 2024. A goal that I've been setting for three years since I turned 50, but my health has held me back and it's usually exploded with a form of flare up with my ulcerative colitis. So I haven't done it. So I'm three years down the line and in my head, I think that's okay. I'll do it next year. Next year, coach, you will be 54, you old fucker, okay? So, time is running out for the little chicken legs. Oh, so, it's important. So, I'll share a little bit with you, and then that'll be a continuation into the next one. Shut up, coach. Please, just get into the video. Okay, now, before we go, I shared a little bit, didn't I, there? I want to, uh, can I talk about this? Push-up posture. Many of you are doing it with me. We did this last December. Now, this year... Thank you. I have had so many messages from people who did it last year, and guess what? They have maintained a routine. It may only be 10 push-ups every other day, but they have maintained the routine. That's the goal of a challenge. Now, later on in this month, I'm going to talk about another challenge, what I call the Rafa Fuck Up Your Training 500 Challenge, okay? You're not going to do that challenge unless you are going to keep training during January, okay? I'll share a little bit about that challenge later on. Perfectly valid challenge for a lot of people, only if you have the capacity for it in your routine. However, push-up challenge, how are you doing? I'm sharing my story, sharing it inside school. You can join school, link in the description if you're not part of it already, okay? And you'll see me pop out little uh, stories on my Instagram uh, profile as well. Keep it going. Okay, it's really important. But do you want to win a cap? I see many of you are already putting in 
a comment. So the way that you can win a cap is just comment on the word cap. This is the week that the new kinetic cycle uh, coaching <laughs> news kinetic kit. What am I talking about? You're the coach. I'm the fucking coach. I know I'm the coach. Okay, you're going to get your kit, those of you who ordered this, on its way, okay? The caps will arrive at the end of the week and I will be sending out already 20 of them will go to various countries around the world and we will join a big map of the kinetic family. Okay, this is really important to me. 2024 is going to see the launch of the new community, Longevity of Motion. You might be part of it. And we're going to join every continent together. And that community is going to be the most beautiful, sexy, lycra-wearing community in the world. <laughs> okay, right, coach, get on. Usual little bits down below, connect, uh, Instagram, TikTok. I will be on them a little bit from time to time. Okay, can I give a big shout out and I will message them to last week's winners. Yes, Steve Wright, are you on? And Dr. Skippers, I will be contacting you. That is Steve Wright and Dr. Skippers. I'll message you and make sure that you get in touch because you're going to be part of school university. Congratulations. Okay. Pull-ups, aren't they the works? Yeah, we'll get on to that. Okay. <laughs> Coach, get on with the show, please. Okay, right. Before we go anywhere, let me open up, okay, and talk about mid-zone two test, upper zone two test, and two drift test. We're going to talk about three tests. I'm going to give you my data, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Why? And I'm going to show you why it's important to increase motivation, to increase compliance, confidence, and therefore, the completion of workouts is maintained at a high level. I'm then going to show you how we then develop into a one-hour test that's got so many other variables, and it's something that I am using for one particular goal that's based on one hour of riding to go under the hour. Those of you who do a little bit of time trialling may be able to work it out, and I'll show you how a 53-year-old, mm, soon to be 54-year-old, can still do it. Some of you may want to be... Uh, talking to me about it. I can just see somebody putting in a question about aero gains. <laughs> because for me to achieve this challenge, it will include a lot of aero gains. Okay, right. So, mid zone two, upper zone two, and two drift test. You can use a pen and paper. You can watch this video back. But we're going to talk a little bit about uh, placing ourselves inside our zone two and measuring continually. This may be even done weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. You will choose because the test is submaximal. The test, therefore, is part of a training regime. There is no pre-anxiety to the test. The test is based on health metrics. We are using heart rate as a guidance towards our 1.5 to 1.9 millimoles of lactic acid. Those of you who come into longevity of motion will get access, first access to new DNA testing that I've got access to and lab testing. If you want to take your fitness testing to a new level, but only for those few that are really interested in that. You don't need it, I promise you. Follow me on this content and I'll help you out, okay? Right, so there's the three tests. What I want to do first is talk to you about why are you training? I want you to give you that whole global effect. Reduce time to fatigue, okay? Now, do not ever forget this. Reduce time to fatigue. Well, what does that mean, coach? We talked about it last week. The mechanical and the efficiency. We want to push power up for less oxygen usage to go further before fatigue hits in. Now, fatigue is that marker that is a buildup, let's say, of hydrogen ions, uh, lactic acid too much. Basically, you run out of fuel, you can't convert energy to move you forward at that particular speed. Speed, mm, there's an important factor. Okay, so the speed we ride at will dictate the time to fatigue. Yes, of course it will. The speed we ride at will be indicated by our fitness. If we want to go fast, we have to get fit. Everything we do has a synergy. So what I want you to do now is in your head have this global concept of, okay, every human being on this planet has a unique smell. Unless you're like my mother. <laughs> Where's this going, coach? She's a twin. Are you a twin? Because you have the same smell as your twin. Now, what is your point, coach, please? 
My point is you are unique, fucking special. Go and look in the mirror, okay? If you've got one near you, get your phone, do a little selfie. You're unique, okay? So what I'm saying is every workout you do has got an impact at different levels on various metrics, biochemistry, muscle fibers, to you than the next person. If everybody on the planet did 100 of the same workouts for 100 days, starting at the same level of fitness, the same age, the same gender, exactly the same, they'd make different progress. Agreed, we know this. But many people are always seeking validation. Am I doing the right workout? If you're doing any workout, it's better than doing no workout, okay? So what I want you to do is have this idea, I am unique. So what you are doing, you reduce time to fatigue is based on what? your micro and macro goals, and your lifelong journey. Your journey, your goals. So I'm sharing with you some of my data and my goals. I want you to try and put yourself in my shoes and try and therefore create your own story. I have been creating goals every December that I can remember since the age of 14. That was at the age that I was exposed to sport at a slightly higher level, okay, than just your high school level went on a little bit to a higher degree. So from every point, I was introduced to a coach saying, okay, what are your goals for next year? Uh, I want to get an Atari for my Christmas. Fucking don't be so stupid, Scott. Right, okay? This is 1984. This is the future. What are your goals for sport? Oh, oh okay, sorry. <laughs> Still want that Atari. I wanted an Atari and a soda stream. Anyone else in those households? Never enough money, was there? <laughs> now I can get any computer game I want. I just want the Atari. Okay. I want to play River Raid. My friend had it. I thought it was great. Anyway, enough about my past, okay? But the whole idea is, what are your goals? What are your micro goals? So day to day, week to week, what are your macro goals? But the journey, the process, that's what I'm helping you stay on. Stay motivated for the process. Because your goals can change and they can deviate, but you've got to have them. You've got to have something to aspire for, okay? As we say regularly, you can stay in bed and have those dreams or get out of bed and fucking chase those dreams. What are you? A sleeper or a doer? A thinker or a doer? A talker or a doer? What are you? Okay, so me, I'm a doer, okay? Right, so... There's the coach right now, today, 250 FTP in that ballpark figure, up to about mm, 264. I'm going to test again in January. May have gone up a little bit, but there's my heart rate, 162. I use a large range of zones. Now, let me talk you through because there are uh, caveats here, okay? And this is, again, everybody's going to be slightly different. So, in my... Uh, Heart rate, why do you use so many zones, coach? Well, I use zone two in this range. If I was to reduce the zones, which I do sometimes for time trialing, and I have a bigger threshold, okay? So when we use this multi-zone approach, the threshold becomes very narrow. Now, I believe that threshold is a bigger range. So at my age, I actually use sub-threshold 152 to 165. As soon as I enter 152, I'm into that early onset of threshold, okay? For me, that, that's close to my lab testing. So that means that my zone two finishes at 144. Well, actually, okay, it may go up a little bit and it may go down a little bit. What, what do you mean, coach? In some zones, you will find, if we go to, say, a five-zone system, you'll find your zone two lower. How does that relate to your breathing? How does it relate to how you feel? Okay, so I like to have a little bit of a caveat. When I go to these long zones, I have 144 is going to be my testing at home, indoors. That's my limit, okay? That's what I'm going to use, same outdoors. But I've got in my head, I can go up into this upper bracket at tempo and not be too worried and give myself a pat on the back if my training is still pushing into there with certain drift efforts, okay? But th that's the most common way most people will have set up their zones, okay? Right, so that's the numbers, that's what we're using, okay? So what I will do then is share with you some data, okay? Because I've done these tests, I've been doing them now for, oh, where are we, December? I've started them before November. 
So the testing is part of the training. Yeah. So I'm doing training sessions. Uh, again, not all of them are on Strava people. Okay. Some of them are off Strava. Okay. But I've been doing this now for a number of weeks and I've been, I've been joining it in with some longer rides and a couple of group rides that I've done. I've managed to do four group rides in the last month. So test one. So let's go through it. There's me. So this is you. This is how you create your basic data, your age, your height, your weight. My FTHR you've seen, 162. My FTP you've seen, 250. 250 as a number on a test, okay? Not as a range, right? As the number. And that number then creates, for me, I am doing two things, okay? So I'm creating a heart rate peak, a number that I am achieving at zone two during the winter. I'm also looking at power to weight. Now, power to weight is important for one of my goals because it's a hilly event, okay? So I'm looking at getting my one hour power to weight to four watts per kilogram minimum by springtime 2024, okay? And I have got no interest in lowering my weight, okay? In fact, if I can get it to 65 kilograms, I might be in a better position, okay? So... First test I did, 60 minutes. Now that's a 10 minute warm up. Okay, just spinning my legs and then 60 minutes at power. Now, there are other tests. So you can do this if you're a little bit more advanced. You wait until your heart rate is in zone two before you start the hour. So you may warm up and you let your heart rate drift and then boom, you start your hour. So you can start the work. So this means that following preset Zwift workouts doesn't work for a lot of people. Be natural and be free-flowing, freestyling. Okay, so that is another way. This is the basic way, 10 minutes, use the power. A more advanced way is use the stimulus, okay, the heart rate. So anyway, one hour, 160 watts. Why? Because it's in the middle. Remember, we're going to, we're going to go middle. So you go to the middle of the zone and you just find right bang in the middle. So I just choose 160. So find your zone, find the middle, ride for one hour. Now in that one hour, in that mid zone, you should keep your heart rate inside zone two. Now, if it drifts away or it goes beyond, maybe there's a ventilation issue, okay? But the beautiful thing is, if it drifts away and it decouples, meaning the heart rate's working at a higher level than what the power is, and you're feeling fine and you're feeling fresh, maybe your zones are wrong. Or maybe there's a clear indication that you've been doing too many training sessions at a higher power and your aerobic base or your aerobic engine, okay, your mitochondrial efficiency is not quite what it should be. If this is the case, then what are you doing? Okay, as I'll talk about in my longevity of motion course, let's look at health statistics. In the UK today, Information was released on the last capture of data. So it was suggesting that two thirds, two thirds of all adults, people over the age of 18 are overweight or obese. Two thirds. They're suggesting that two and a half million people in the UK right now are off work because of weight related illnesses. And it's costing the NHS 100 billion pound a year and within the next three years, medical uh, intervention spent on people with weight-related issues will be more than all cancer patients. Fucking ridiculous. So it is, isn't it? It's crazy. Your metabolic response, your mitochondrial efficiency, and I've said this before, pre-diabetic, you will have much higher levels of lactic acid than your body can tolerate. Okay? So let's not go down a rabbit hole and talk about weight, etc., we do that in other videos, okay? But let's just talk about that. It zones out. So if your mid, but sorry, your mid zone comes out and you're boom, you're all over the place, then we're in trouble. So look at mine. So we're looking at 144 as the top, and we've got this little capture at 145 to 151 that I have in my head is that little buffer. Okay, I'm not in zone two, I'm just starting to drift, okay? Okay, so 131. Hey coach, not bad. Yep, thank you very much. Test two. 
Now, test two was done the following week. It was just part of a training session, right? I go to the top. Well, you probably already seen that 189 is the configured score for a 250. So I just put it to 190. So this gives me 2.9 watts per kilogram. Very good. 140. Yeah, I was happy with that. 140, okay? Now, obviously, I can go into this in much more detail and give you my average and where the drift and how it plateaus out, etc. okay? Now, some people may experience a spike in their heart rate if they take a, a drink of water or they move around fast. Some people can get a spike in their heart rate to a Bluetooth connection that's a little bit loose or sometimes interferes with another item of Bluetooth connectivity inside the room. What you're looking for is trying to alleviate them. I have lots of clients whereby this happens. I just cut it out, ignore it, okay? It, it, it's long as the number you can see, you can follow the trace, okay? But there is points whereby the drift speeds up, okay? There is a change in the curve, okay? So for me, my second one, now what's the VI, sorry? The VI, remember, is the variable index, and this is the difference between the average power and the normalized power. Normalized power is a good score as long as you've done something over 20 minutes. Don't use it for anything under. It's trying to predict without accelerations and decelerations, peaks and troughs, what you may be expected to achieve in that period of time if you didn't have that at a steadier pace. So lots of people use it and think, wow, look at my normalized power, okay? Yeah. Be careful with that, only if it's over 20 minutes and how you're going to use it. I can do some charts on variable power, but really that's the only way I'm using it, is to make sure it's between 1.00 and 1.02 to get that steady state. If you're using erg mode, no problem. You can't go anywhere with the power in erg mode anyway, can you? Okay, so second one, 190, 2.9, heart stays in zone, 140, peak. Okay, now in this second one where it peaked at 140, it actually moved in the last five minutes from about 136 and it just started to drift up and down. I was moving around a little bit and I could feel myself actually getting quite hot on that day. Okay, there was a different temperature. So you've got to watch out for that and try and keep everything as normalized as possible. Test three, again, following week. Now, why did I not move it any more? More than that, I only moved it up 10 watts. Okay, now remember, 10 watts for me pushed it to 3 watts per kilogram, right? But look at the difference. My heart rate broke 141, okay? It went to 145. And it did this in the last 10 minutes, eh, sorry, 14 minutes. It broke 141 at 46 minutes. Now, it only went to 145, so I'm thinking already in my head, hey, I'm close. I'm close to that level. Now, in terms of the RPE, I'll be honest with you, there was very little difference in RPE between test two and test three. I scored them the same. The way I felt, my breathing was under control. I could have sung any a chorus line from any Proclaimer song I wanted. I could cycle 500 miles, yep, as I always do. But the numbers suggested different, and that was the key thing. I said, okay, right, so my goal is to get this ride at this power, 200 watts, at this 140, okay? Now, the beautiful thing is, I can just add this in as a training ride, okay? Because I know that in my field, I'm close to zone two here. I'm very close. So I can keep this going, and I'll use the heart rate break 46 minutes. So let's say I move the next one, and I do it at 48 minutes, 54 minutes, great. Let's say I do it and it hits 30 minutes. What's that suggesting, okay? So we'll come back to that in a second. But there are other things that are going on in here. But that is a basic, you know, three weeks. That can be built into a three-week training plan whereby you've got your key workouts, you've got your breakthrough workouts, you've got your group ride, you rest every four weeks, and then you do it again. And you just include, these are just zone two hour rides, but you're including them as parts of your ability to perform review progress. So let's take a second, okay? I want you to now think, okay, well, what could you do in that protocol? Okay, so what can I do? You can shout out. Yeah, I can hear some of you. Yeah, I could move it to 90 minutes. Yeah, of course I could. Hey, coach, you're only doing 60 minutes, but you talk about this 60-minute uh, goal that you've got. 
I'll let you into a secret. Now, that 60-minute goal, as some of you haven't already guessed, is a 25-mile time trial under 60 minutes. Now, I haven't been under 60 minutes since I turned 50 years old. Of course, I've been under 60 minutes. Say it like I'm a prick. Sorry about that. I sound like a knob end. Of course, I've been under 60 minutes. Yes, but for many people, that is a golden number. It can be done. And there are particular ways that I think I'm quite good at training and helping people get that particular number. Okay, a lot of it comes down to positioning and aero flow on the bike, but it can be done. So for me, 60 minutes is a marker for me indoors. I am a low tolerance indoor rider. And what I mean by that is my brain needs really dialing in. So that's why I talk a lot about cognitive stimulus, about cognitive overload on an indoor scenario. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to turn up and say, yeah, I'll just rock out three hours today on my indoor trainer. Wank, diddy, wank, 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 wank. I won't, okay? I can't do it, okay? I can do it if I need to, okay? But I don't enjoy doing it. And if I don't enjoy doing something, <laughs> yeah, guess what happens? Yeah, I'll deviate away from it, okay? So my goal is coaching, not riding. So I'll use my time when I can, when I'm healthy, but We'll come back to my goal in a second, but sure, I could I could extend it to 90 minutes, which I will do, okay? I won't go beyond 90 minutes, not in many rides indoors, okay? Uh, but that'll be my goal, to take it to 90 minutes. What do we come into trouble with? Temperature, okay? Temperature, your core temperature will increase, therefore your heart rate response has to increase to keep your temperature down. Why? Because your body wants to keep a steady state homeostasis, equilibrium, it needs to do that. That's his job. Okay, so I keep two fans, one low, one high, one front, one back. Sometimes I'll change them around. However, when I'm doing the test ride, some of my tips and tricks for motivating yourself, you must eliminate. You cannot get off the bike. I want you to keep riding that continuous flow. That is where indoor riding in terms of testing our CV system is quite good. If I go outdoors, the fucking penguins are packing up and leaving Scotland right now. It's so cold, okay? So my heart rate is not going to be influenced by being too warm, but it's also bloody cold, okay? And there are other things about happening with that as well. But let's not talk about that now. Stay on point, coach. Okay, we got the idea there. So let's say, uh, go back to that where I said 46 minutes. Let's say we do another 60 minute and we're at that advanced level. And it goes off at 37, 27. This could be a great message whereby you're not recovering. You're slightly dehydrated. There are other issues going on in your body. Maybe it feels terrible. These are indications whereby you've got to read the body language. You've got to understand the messaging that's been given to you by these metrics. Many people don't. Now, let's say you are unsure about what level you're at. You pick and choose one of these tests. You do not have to move on. Maybe you do the first test and you stay within zone. You don't have to move up to the next one. If you don't want to, you can do a couple of weeks. Consolidation is still progress. You do not naturally have to progress every workout. This again is a confusion that's in the world of online fitness. You do not, okay? You're trying to create the right stimulus for you. But remember, stimulus comes from more than workouts. Nutrition, hydration, stress and sleep. And all of these things are impacted by the pillars in your life, your work, your family setup. Okay, they, these are key instigators of oxidative stress. So a tough day at work, okay, can obviously be alleviated with a form of riding whereby it will focus your head away and it can help de-stress, okay, that high fight or flight, okay? but it's not going to lower the stress that's already been inputted into the body from that tough day at work. And you've got to understand that. You've got to be able to grade and assess and give RPE scores for work, for health, all sorts of different things, okay? Once you create that, the key pillars. Some of you may have done programs of, of motivation or, or self-review or self-reflective studies at work. You may have done things like the Wheel of Life, how much value do you place on your finances, your, you know, relationships with other members of staff outside of Christmas parties when you're not folk copying your arse, things like that, okay? 
But you've got to understand that. And that, I, again, I'm, I'm brushing over that. But the workout is certainly not the one place whereby all fitness comes from. Okay? So it's certainly not the place that you go and, you know, cry into your napkin when you fall sick and you can't do. Okay? Health is the key thing. Okay, so that, that's those three workouts. That's what I'm working on. I'll be sharing more of it in my school. There is a little bit more. Okay? So you perform review progress you choose based on your unique goals okay not the training plan that Zwift has given you your unique goals are you moving towards them and remember every workout has synergy okay with other aspects of your fitness and of your life so take a sec and just you know look at what you're doing how could you blend in data that does not form any means of anxiety to actually assessing. Submaximal testing is the best testing, okay? Because you are, you're naturally measuring the health metrics, aren't you? You know, a lot of testing, as I've talked about before, becomes a psychological test. There is the number you got before, coach, 250. What are you going to do now? I can't get 251. Okay, no problem. I'll find it. Okay. You're probably the same, aren't you? Okay. So what happens if your zone two goes up in terms of I keep moving it up? So you can see for me, okay, coach, if you can do 200 watts at zone two, then your FTP is not 250. No, but it's probably in that zone because a 250 FTP number is a 265 upper zone. So yeah. I may have moved it up to 255. I'm certainly not going to move it because I will be continually doing threshold efforts around 260, 270 and just seeing what my heart rate does. But by myself giving me as a 53-year-old that large threshold range of my heart rate, I'm going to hit it, am I? Yeah. So I know that I'm going to be moving and progressing. Why? Because the RPE is going to be high. My heart rate is going to be in that zone. But what if you never move your FTP anymore? Well, I know that 250s on my indoor walk bike will get me 25 miles, okay? And it's a test I have done many a time. One hour at 250 watts, okay, gives me four watts per kilogram. And when I dial in my aero positioning, I know that I'm in close enough shape. What's the big thing that restricts UK time trialists? Breaking records? The weather. Okay, so that is the variable that is out of my control. So you need several attempts at your goal when you're doing something like this. Yeah, baby, and I've set them up, okay? Right, okay, so create your own, perform, review, progress. Some people are doing it every single week with their zone two. Yeah, every week, okay? Because it has the ability to increase completion, promote compliance, an increase, confidence. I want you to think about that, confidence. If we have confidence in what we're doing, we're more likely to turn up. Think about any aspect in your whole life whereby you're low in confidence. You're more likely to withdraw, go into the shadows, not put yourself forward. It's true at any level of sport. Talent is, you know, abundant, okay, in lots of people. Confidence comes along and it just exposes that talent, okay, at all the right opportunities. It's natural, so it is, okay? And what we want to do in training is increase touch points. The more often you can train, okay, the better you will make that adaptive process, as long as you're not overreaching. Remember, there's no such thing as overtraining, it's overreaching. You've got to be able to recover from it. And when we've got confidence that we are doing the right thing and we're seeing progress with low intensity, high volume, wow, we make differences. Now, this is incredibly important for older riders. I don't care if you were an international rider or you were a world champion. This works for everybody, okay? It works for everybody. So a lot of my philosophies, especially for people over the age of 40 and 50, is having this high level of permafit. This permafitness can then have spikes spikes of blocks of training whereby we can expose ourselves to really dialed in hard blocks. But we need to have this higher level of perma fitness because it matches our ego, it matches our lifestyle, it matches what we desire. 
Okay, so here's the thing that you've got to do in all aspects of life, really, not just hard training or softer training for a longer period that I find hard. What you've got to do is you've got to look at it. Let's take any problem in life. Okay, let's say you've had a difficult day at work. Maybe the kids are sick. You've got to fix this problem. And what you've got to do is you've got to dial in. You've got to accept it. So you look at the problem face on. Oh my God, I've got another threshold effort. You smile, first of all. Okay. You then remind yourself, you chose this. You chose this. This is the way that you're wired. This is the way that you tick. And you lean into it. Yeah, okay. I chose this. This is me. I enjoy this. Let's do this. That is it. It's that simple. You've got to continue to tell yourself. Do not regret it. Do not hate it. Do not turn it off. And do not fucking quit. Because you chose it. Okay? Now, when you choose the path to develop your metabolic response, the speed will go through the roof. However, if you have the patience of a Springer Spaniel, then it won't work, okay? Because you do not let your ego creep in and say, this is not working, this is not hard enough, I do not feel like I am working fast enough. I've only got four hours a week of training. Four hours a week of training is great. You do three hours zone two, one hour hard, okay? You place that one hour hard in one workout. And when you work hard, and I mean you work hard, that you then appreciate the zone two. You're doing it right. Remember what happens? You converge everything into zone three and you become that zone three fanny. Sure, you're pretty fit, but you stay there, okay? And you get sick more often. Yeah, you don't really enjoy your cycling too much because you're listening to voices. Your average speed is shit. Oh, your power's gone down. Oh, what's wrong with you? They're made up noises, okay? It's like the sixth sense. I only see dead people on Strava. <laughs> That's quite scary. Those voices don't exist, okay? <laughs> they don't, okay? Anyway, it's not a psychoanalysis test here, coach. Right, anyway, so once we've done that, and we've got this high three Cs, the completion, the compliance. Remember, compliance is you will turn up. Yeah, you'll turn up more, you'll turn up, because you're enjoying it. You're making progress. You've got data to deal with. You're suddenly coaching yourself. Ah, there's no need for you, coach. Fuck off. Okay. Now, what you must remember is from this video, you're watching it, you're thinking, I'm going to do that. I'm going to reset. I'm going to start again from fresh. You don't ever reset your mindset. Okay? You can't. Okay? You don't ever start from zero. Okay? And you don't ever wipe the slate clean. Tomorrow, this is the new me. And we're getting to that time of year, December, people are starting to think about, you know, what we may have resolutions, we're going to make habit changes, da-da-da-da-da-da. You can't. And the reason is because we are habitual creatures, human beings. We live sort of geographically, socially, economically. We live within a range of behaviours. They're preset. Many experts believe personalities are preset by the age of three. Okay, so if you've got a three-year-old that's telling you to fuck off, you're in trouble. Okay, what have you done? Okay, that comes at the age of five. Okay, when they start school. <laughs> Okay, I'm only joking, please, parents of three-year-olds. God bless you. Yeah, get some sleep soon, okay? <laughs> anyway, the thing is, don't reset. Think of the habits that you've created and then you're trying to break them, okay? What happens is you've built up a fantastic bibliography of events, of problems that you weren't able to solve. And as we go forward in the future, 2024 is going to bring about similar problems. Fucking hell, coach. What you called? Nostra what was his name? Nostradama or something. Yeah. <laughs> Quasimodo. I think they were cousins, were they not? Anyway, the thing is, it's natural. Think about yourself. All the problems that keep arising, keep arising, keep arising. Well, when it comes to fitness, have you seen something similar? You get to a certain point... You lose motivation or you break down a certain month, certain problems. There are things that keep occurring. So when we say, great, coach has given me an idea for a new test. I'm going to start tomorrow. Fantastic. This will be my... It's not going to happen. Okay. You've already got a mindset. And what we're trying to do is to improve it, make it smarter. 
I believe the best athletes in the world, they prepare for difficult times. And when difficult times come, they've got a pre-plan. We've created this plan. This is how we're going to tackle it and get over that wall. We're not going to lie down. We're not going to cry. We're not going to give up. We're not going to complain. Okay? We're going to deal with it. So I like to use sport and life very similar. We deal with the six inches in front of our face. We create solutions. Okay, you've heard that a loads of time. Don't bring me problems, bring me solutions. But it's true. How do you do it? Oh, you tune into YouTube and you try and get a solution. Okay, right. But what I'm saying is you've got the skills. You just might not have the confidence. You've got to keep going. So I would say from watching this, hey, great, I'm going to take this on board. I know where I'm at. I know the problems I'm going to face. Now, the best thing, or in my experience of 30 years coaching, the way that we, good coaching, I mean really good coaching, okay, do not give all the answers. You've got to come up with the solutions that fit in your world, okay? So by creating a scenario, and this is what I will do in my community courses, creating scenarios of information and you choose what works for you and then you create. Okay, having one solution for one problem is bullshit. You cannot do that because your uniqueness, remember, unless you've got a twin, you've got a unique smell. Okay, and what I mean by that is not the smell that comes from certain body parts, okay, <laughs> but it's your unique smell. Think about that. You can have so much fun with that. Okay, another good fact as well is earwax is sweat. You probably knew that anyway, but yeah. So I have got selective hearing problems. It's, it's earwax because I train too much. I've got too much sweat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but your uniqueness is special. Okay, so think about how you've solved problems before, but think about being part of a community aspect. People that have been in similar situations. That's something 2024 is. I keep saying I'm going to create the best cycling community in the world, on the planet. Okay, the really healthy, productive, sort of joining in, supportive community. You'll be part of it if you want. You'll get invitations only. If you're part of my school community, but you'll see lots more chat of stories of people in the community within YouTube as well. Okay, so don't think you need to reset your mindset. You need to grow it. You need to develop it. What's the one thing that happens to us as we hit the age of 50, 60? Our mindset it filters and it funnels and we become more closed because some of us switch off and ah, oh, it's the bollocks. It's not worth it. I've seen all this. This is what works for me. That's great. Okay. But if you're looking to expand, to develop, we've got to be open all the time to change. Okay. Because I talked about that concept of this genetic mindset whereby people, experts, okay, so-called experts. Yeah. Everybody's an expert on the internet, aren't they? I am not an expert, okay? I'm a passionate, experienced coach, okay? You can define expert. Guru? No. That's only in sex, okay? And I am certainly not a sex guru, okay? <laughs> the thing is, right? Okay, I've lost my mind. I've lost my track of thought here. Genetic mindset coach. Yeah, well, the world is developing. Therefore, people are losing, say, basic skills. One of them being fucking cooking. I mean, cooking, come on. People, are we getting that lazy? Oh no, it's so easy now, coach. I can go on my phone. Look at me. What's the sign for a fucking mobile phone? Is it that? What do you do? You flip it or something? I get on my phone and I just phone, I was going to say uh, Uber, but is that not the taxi people? But you know what I mean. Fucking, all that shite. Bring me a Crunchy and a Big Mac and a Can I and Brew, please. I'm watching the telly. Fuck's sake, honestly. What are we coming to? But the whole thing is the world itself is becoming much more accessible, easier technology. And people believe that this is having an effect on the grit. You've heard me talk about the iceberg profile, emotional mood states, vigor standing up like an iceberg. And that vigor is that grit and determination, okay? The very thing that makes us stubborn sometimes, okay? If we can control that vigor, we become a force of nature. If we don't control the vigor, yeah, we usually end up a gambling addict, high on crack cocaine, okay, doing things we shouldn't be doing because we can't control it. 
You can't say that online coach. Okay, sorry. Right, anyway. But you get my point, yeah? Okay? I don't believe that human beings fall into that. I don't believe that the youth of today are becoming lazy just because life is much easier than it was for me in the 70s and the 80s and for you in the 50s or the 60s, okay? We grow up in our time and we make the best case for our position. Life is throwing opportunities at us every single day. I've just thrown three tests at you. Some of you will poo-poo them and say, fuck off, that doesn't mean anything to me. Some of you will take part of that information and you will mould it and it will become something that increases your completion, compliance and confidence. And if that happens, then I have succeeded because I'm helping you access a higher level of fitness which generates a higher level of health which means that your longevity increases. And I'm not talking about longevity of years on this planet. I am talking about productivity, that your production goes up during the day. And that means it's not about having a longer life. It's about having a better life. Hey, that sounds fucking good, doesn't it? Yeah. Maximizing what you can do on this planet. Okay. Rather than just being somebody who participates you are somebody who contributes. That's a beautiful place. I'm going to stand for fucking Prime Minister. What will I call my party? It's got to have Iron Brew and the Proclaimers or some reference to them in it. Okay, folks. Have we finished? Well, okay. You said that you were going to talk about your ride. I'm going to show you next session. I'm going to talk about a ride that is one hour long that gives me Three numbers. So my one hour is obviously based on me going under 60 minutes for 25 miles. Why is that? We call it the sort of standard. It's the golden benchmark of time trialing. Okay. Oh yeah, people can go under 50 minutes in their 50s. Yeah, I know. Okay. But this old man, he's got a disease. This old man, he's getting sick. Chicken Stevens is fucking shit. And he's in my head. Do you know why? Because Christmas songs have come on. And I grew up in the 70s and 80s when Shaken Stevens in the UK was all over the TV and my mother loved them. And fucking Julie and his rickety, shickety house that was falling down or whatever it was, his Christmas song came on today and my daughter started singing it and it's in my head. So every now and then I start breaking out in a Shaken Stevens song. Does this happen to you? Is it some sort of Christmas song phobia? or sort of anxiety I've got about Christmas and Christmas music. And why is all Christmas music stuck in the 80s? I only know that type of genre. There must have been Christmas songs written after that period. But I don't know them, I don't hear them. So it takes me back to a place when all I wanted was that fucking Atari. Yeah, I'll do a video about long lost childhoods. <laughs> okay, right. Three outcomes. So I'm going to talk about them in that hour. I've told you one. I want to hit 250 watts for one hour. I do one ride and I did it on Saturday. It's on my Strava. It's hard to interpret, but you'll see there are three numbers in there. One of them's a normalized power. One of them's a 45 minute effort within. And one of them is including the warm up and the cool down. I get three numbers for them and I use all three of them as targets for my next ride. It is a subtle, clever way to increase compliance increase completion and move you forward and it's ways that nobody else uses okay because nobody else is really that creative when it comes to coaching to understand that we need to keep turning up and we need to stay motivated because it's far too easy to lose track of what we're trying to do other than satisfy the ego with a hard workout because coach no pain means no gain yeah it's not the case no pain, no gain is a mantra that doesn't exist now, okay? Because when we go for pain and we cross that white line, I'll give you pain, okay? I'll give you pain like you've never had before. Come to a cinema near you. Okay. Right, folks. I think I've covered about everything, okay? As it comes to an end, okay? Hey, we're back on big screen. Anyway. Have we got, uh, I'm going to have to look, my trusty uh, technician is upstairs. I don't know if they're watching the video. They're in another room. They're not in the studio. I need a winner because I haven't got my phone on me. I'll speak a bit louder and see if my team can hear me. 
to see who's going to get the cycling cap. Now, the beautiful thing about this cycling cap is we don't even have it yet. The person that wins this cap will get the very first kinetic cap, okay? And this kinetic cap, okay, will be shown out, okay? We have a winner. I'm going to announce it live. We're getting it delivered straight into the studio. It's going to go up onto the screen. Oh, it's going to go into comments, okay? Thomas Froome. Thomas Froome. Thomas, are you on live? Are you still on, Thomas Froome? You have won the cap. Now, I'm going to be giving away more of these caps. We have a lot of them coming. You've got to be in school uh, to be able to get them, okay? Now, once the caps come, there are other kinetic items going out. Yes, I've got some sweat towels as well and some little buffs as well, okay? Hey, folks, I hope you've enjoyed that. Q&A sessions are now going to exist inside school, but please contact me on kineticcyclecoaching at gmail.com if you have a particular question. As I've said numerous times on the live, my coaching uh, platforms are full, okay? There is no room at the inn. There's a Christmas theme for you. <laughs> there is no room at the inn, okay? And that is why I'm building a new course within school my longevity of motion which includes what i call the triple the three phased vo2 approach and i want to leave you with something do you call it zone five or vo2 it's an interesting okay aerobic capacity okay that's another one the different terminologies i've found over the last 30 years for zones and and uh particular uh, energy systems within these zones, the terminology sometimes becomes something that really frustrates me. It's like listening to a politician who wants to confuse you and they use a language that comes straight out of a fucking dictionary that the normal people don't really want to bend their ear to, so they switch off. I want to make sure that I progress coaching at a level that I can share information with you that you can take away and you can use yourself, okay? That's important to me, okay? Doesn't count if he's not on, he's bailed, okay? Thomas, if you're not on live, you need to comment, we'll need another new winner, okay? Which uh, is going to prove very difficult, as my team has just left the studio again. I'm going to stay on uh, until we get a, a, a call out, until we've got a real person on. I'm going to talk even louder for my, my team to come back. Okay, why did I not forget? Why did I forget my phone? Okay. Uh, talking of shaking Stevens, I saw somebody mention there, when something gets into your head, that earworm, okay? I hope I get into your head with an earworm, okay? And uh, some of this information. Okay, team's back in. We need a winner. Give me a three, two, one. David Hogg. David Hogg, are you online? I feel like I'm on Radio 1 here in the UK. Hi, this is Coach Scott on Kinetic Cycle Coach, and I'm reaching out to David Hogg. Hey, David. Are you there? Hey, Dave. Davy, hey Hoggy, are you out there? Give us a little shout, Hoggy. You've just won a cap, okay? If you're on, I hope my team, Dave Hogg is in the room. Hey, David Hogg, what's your nickname? I've just been calling you Davy, Davy boy, David. It's probably just going to be David, or some people call me Hoggy, okay? Congratulations, okay? You can claim your cap. Hoggy, well done, okay? Apologies if that's not your name, but in Scotland, everybody gets a nickname. David, now here's the conditions of winning the cap. Okay, Hoggy, I love it. Love it, he's a Hoggy. Brilliant. Okay, Hoggy, what are you going to do when you get the cap? Are you willing to take a photograph of you wearing the cap? You've got to get to a landmark of your village, your town, your city, something that stands out. Boom, put the cap on and you become part of the geography of the world map. Is that possible, Hoggy? Where are you from? The world online wants to know. By the way, is everybody giving me a thumbs up on YouTube? Okay, this is a live video that will disappear after a day or two, so help other people get it. Hoggy, tell us now, type faster. Come on, Hoggy, what you got? Fat fingers? We're gonna get those fingers into dexterity. We want to know where you are. The world wants to know, Hoggy. Tell us. Come on, everybody's shouting, Hoggy, Hoggy, Durham. Oh my God, brilliant. How close are you to? I once went to a cross-country final in the Durham area in Annick Castle. 
Is that where they filmed Harry Potter? There's a big steep hill. I had to run up that big steep hill. You might be near the Angel of the North. Oh, Quintus, you're in Clyde Bank. Oh, you've got no chance then. I'm just going to say wet, wet, wet. Okay, Durham. Fantastic place. Hoggy, you're going to have some fantastic pictures. If you get that cart, we're going to get that first picture. You're going to choose something iconic in Durham. Just think, Hoggy, you're going to be in some pictures with people in Sydney, people in Africa, people in Canada, America, Brazil, Colombia. We've got one going too, okay? Do the angel. Hoggy, I love you, okay? You're now a VIP member of Kinetic Cycle Coaching. Hey folks, please, let's not forget about the wonderful content that I've just shared. If any of it was of any use to you, give the video the thumbs up. And please, do you want to get involved in future content? Do you want to know more about a story I want to share about a rider who experienced overtraining syndrome? Yeah, really bad. Got themselves into a real mess. In the last two weeks, I've had two messages, long stories from riders who have been in that situation. Riders into the, in their 40s, they've got themselves in a health mess. And I want to share that story and show you how they've come out of it. I want to share with you a story about DNA testing, whereby we can use a gut analysis and a muscle uh, DNA to actually pinpoint workouts that will be better for you, rather than just throwing a dart blindly into a board. Lots to come up, but you can shape the future videos by getting involved in school, answering some questions that are coming up over the next week, and maybe even playing a part in an interview or one, or being someone who's going to have a cycling cap in a picture. We're going to create this wonderful wonder wall all around the world during the next year. Okay, overtraining interesting. Yeah, good. Okay, folks, I'm going to love you and leave you. I hope you're well. I will see you next Monday live on the 11th of December. I should have completed my Christmas shopping. Sorry, my wife will have completed all Christmas shopping. And I'll talk about the ride with three outcomes. Something a little bit more motivating for you to take your zone two up. But I would love to hear your zone two stories. Okay, folks, you take care. Thank you very much. As always, you can join me inside school with following that link. You take care, folks, and I will speak to you all very, very soon. Stay safe, and remember, anyone can train hard, but there's only a few of us can strain smart.